I'm here with my lovely co-host, Mary Ann Francisi. Hi, Mayor. Oh, hi, Maddie. <laughs> so today we are continuing with embodying wisdom. This is part three of this, the last part. And interestingly enough, we are going to talk about indigenous views on the power of three, indigenous teachings about three. So when we studied, and both Marianne and I have studied with Tom Porter, who's the Mohawk spiritual leader, he says over and over again that threes are repeated within their culture. So it starts with the three original instructions. They say that all humans were given instructions on how to be humans, just like a deer or a tree. It's just that we are the only ones that forget. So just to quickly review those three original instructions, be grateful for what you have and not worried about what you don't have. Treat each other and all of nature with kindness and respect and live in clans. Now clans are groups of related families. So you are in a community where everybody is family, everybody's looking out for each other. And often we'll refer to that, especially when we explain it to children, you're living in a loving community where everybody cares about each other. They had practical reasons for that so they could keep track of who was marrying who so that if you, if you were bear clan, let's say, you had to marry outside into one of the other eight clans so that you knew that you were going to have children with somebody who was a close relative. So it had a practical purpose, like most things in Native America. And then it had an, uh, a, a spiritual purpose also, which is pretty obvious. I also found it interesting with the power of three in the original instructions when we talk about I we and what we're creating so yeah. from yes from the i standpoint it's that gratitude be grateful every day start your day with a prayer of gratitude you know the we, we we're treating each other with kindness and respect and then if we do that we are creating the loving community and a well, great place and that is so beautiful because it also connects back to one of my favorite Native American authors and teachers, um, Robin Kimmerer, who wrote Braiding Sweetgrass, right? Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful book. And in it, she writes about the Sky Woman story and how the right. earth was created. It's really a creation story. And she too talks about these three coming together and says that the earth was actually created by the two forces of one gratitude sky woman's deep gratitude for what the animals and birds and waters gave her as a home and she calls the respect which you're talking about a respect going both ways reciprocity so mm. of yeah. gratitude and reciprocity, the earth was created. And that to me just says the call for reciprocity, safe right. reciprocity, that is the divine covenant of us being on this earth at this time of what we, what we give, what we receive back, but to have that movement going. And I feel like it's very connected to the original instructions as well. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. And when um when Tom describes the the how this all came to be, Sky Woman brings in the power of Sky World, the spirit mm -hmm. of the universe, if you'd like to say. So she she comes here to earth by accident, like you said, very grateful, gets saved by the animals who are already here because it's a world of water. Then she uses the earth's power mm -hmm. to create. So the muskrat brings her the dirt. She uses her special powers from the, the sky world that she came from, creates this earth. And then the dirt itself the elements create us mm -hmm. and everything that grows and lives. So that's why for the Haudenosaunee, they say we have a braided soul 
or a braided spirit. So what would you say are the three parts of the spirit? Is it it's it's mind, body, spirit, or? I think when, when they're looking at my interpretation, um, when they're looking at the, the, the braided spirit, they're yes. looking at, because they talk about what happens when a person passes on. So your spirit, your spirit that is of the creator, that returns to the, the great spirit, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have the spirit that is of the earth. So that's, mm -hmm. that spirit continues to remain here. And they actually have two different ceremonies in the spring and the fall, very similar to the Mexican Day of the Dead ceremonies, where they stay up all night and feed the ancestors. Mm -hmm. But then they also have personal ceremonies that they do because they believe that these spirits are still here with us, helping this part this one third, then of course, the, the body is the material form only. So they describe the material form as being here to embody the other two spirits. Mm. This is how we get to live. So when, when you're looking at that idea that we are these three parts, it brings us back to that. If you're going to only look at the material, if you're going to say everything is science, 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 right? Just what we can prove, just what we can calculate, just what we can touch. You're leaving out two thirds of what it is to be a human being. And in, and in their view, you know, that's, that's the part that goes back. And this is why burial is so important to them. It goes back, it becomes the dirt, it feeds the plants, which feed the, you know, it becomes the part of the circle of life. Tom describes it as the power of earth. You become the mother. You don't, don't just return to her, you become the mother. And then he goes on, he, he tells a really funny story because he goes on to talk about how one of the problems with the Christian Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is there's no women, yeah. you know? So he tells, I, <laughs> I, I hope I don't offend anybody, but it is a pretty funny joke. So, well, and it is, a, it has been a real question with, especially with um, mystical teachings and uh, those, Christians who really contemplate the feminine and there was a push at one point for the Trinity to also embody the feminine but it it didn't quite fit so there is this truth of the language of it is completely in the feminine right uh, in the masculine of the father son and holy that's, spirit exactly whereas it could have been the father the mother the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's in a much more indigenous way of looking at it. And, and obviously when we're looking at that, that braided soul idea, but Tom tells this story about, about, um, about these three women, there's a Jewish woman, a Christian woman, and, uh, and a, um, a Mohawk woman who sadly they're in an accident. They pass away, they go up to heaven and the, 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 Spirit meets them to take them to the creator. They go to the creator who's sitting on this beautiful throne. And the creator looks at the women and goes, says to the Jewish woman, okay, you can sit on this side. And you Christian woman, you're going to sit on this side. And the Mohawk woman looks at the creator and goes, what are you doing in my chair? <laughs> <laughs> She's the grandmother. mother. She right. is the mother. She is the mother. And, and he uses that joke, of course, to lighten this, this idea that this is one of the places where we in Western culture depart from many, many of these indigenous teachings. It's not just in Native America, though that's the ones we're most familiar with. But it's also through, you know, throughout many of the African indigenous cultures, it's very, very important too that we are also a culture that fears death i found this part of the trinity of the the haudenosaunee trinity really interesting that when somebody is dying part of the prayer process to get them through is to remind them not to be sad 
You're mm-hmm. just, you're going on. You're going back and you're going forward. You're going back to where you were. You're going forward. It's going to be like a reunion. The, the part of you that remains here is just the material part. And that's going to go back into the earth and help life continue. Mm. You know, so the whole, this whole beauty of recognizing that death is a part of the continuum of the infinity also i think serves to ease a lot of anxiety that people feel a lot of anger a lot of pressure (laughs) and it and it also makes the time of being on earth and being embodied as very special because it is a temporary experience right Right. of what it fully feels to be embodied and in relationship with all beings right right nature with the aliveness with each other and to have this continual strand of kindness the essence of giving the gifts while you're here while you're in body so that when you no longer are the essence of you then goes into the earth and if your time on earth was filled with with following those original instructions like beautiful energy then goes into the mother to create further and then what beautiful light goes into the heavens to um bring that that light in and so it does feel like it is way more balanced yes right there is there is a balance in this trinity we we, as we were talking about the trinities of creation where there's more of the opposing forces right that there is that there's more movement towards it and reconciliation this feels very much um a trinity of balance right and and the brilliance of the way it's described is it's simple it's also complex and of course they talk about it in the ceremonies they talk about it with their children but it's It is instructions on how you are supposed to embody these teachings, who you are supposed to be. That's exactly what you're saying. And that's the action. And it's not that other, other spiritual beliefs, other religions don't teach that, but they make it kind of like a, 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 if you don't act this way, there's this consequence. There's this punishment. Yes. You know? There's, there's not this recognition that at least one third of your soul is going back to the universe, mm-hmm. that that part of you that was, has always been here is going back and could possibly come back again. They do believe in reincarnation. These loving spirits that are roaming the earth, looking after us, you know, they can possibly be reincarnated too, you know, so that that part is the mystery part of it but but the infinity part of it this this idea that you are part of this great infinite light and beingness is what's used through the instructions to tell you who to be and how to be while you are here for the short trip (laughs) it makes sense to me it makes me think about just the thinking of the next sec- seven generations and the impact of any harm we may do small or large right on um the future like there is great impact because of this infinite sense of how right. we are today is going to impact and when we make a mistake right so when we do harm the the goal is to come back to restoring making right right um, coming together relationship right making right. relationship right so if we are doing wrong to the earth there needs to be a reconciliation in that relationship because we have done harm somehow and um one of the most beautiful 
things I have always found in any of the Native American ceremonies or interactions is this idea of the gift giving. Yeah. Wearing gifts. There, there is so much gift giving. And I feel like that somehow is connected to like as human beings, we each bear a gift that we're supposed to give freely. But also, again, in the reciprocity, like we we must give back some gift right. for whatever we've been given in the smallest of ways. Right. And I love that. I love the, to me, that's concrete gratitude. It's, it's gratitude in complete motion. What gift do I come bearing? Right. And, and if you look at the earth as your oldest mother. Yes. Right. And the very ground you're walking on could be your ancestor, could be your grandmother or your great grandfather, Mm. or it could be someone in your family. Because when that grass grows, who eats it? You know, a bird, a bird could fly away, drop a piece of your grandparent. You know, I mean, it's the whole idea is that, that the, your, your contribution to this material life spreads far and wide. So you respect every space. Well, we can make corporations into individuals, right? Right, right. Corporations are individuals. Why can't we then make the rock our grandfather? Right. Why can't (laughs) we make the lake our our auntie? And start to relate that way versus a resource. Like that to me, again, is... The, the problem with our relationship yes. with nature. It's that, again, that sense of ownership and capital rather than what, you know, Tom gives in the original instructions of oh, no respect. You yeah. give respect, they give respect. They will always, pr- nature will always provide as long as you give back. Right, right, because if the, it's not here, what are we going to do? Right, what are the people yeah. going to do? So, so the teaching is sharing, and he, and also he mentions how the teaching of the earth is you don't take more than you need. Mm-hmm. You know, that since we're all in relationship with this planet, it's not fair. You don't take more than you need because the creator's intention is that there's enough for everyone. Yes. Yeah. So that, you know, like the, in the teaching in the original, in the um, great law of peace, where the peacemaker says, you know, wherever there is hatred and greed, there will never be peace. You know, mm-hmm. so it, there, it's very clear how to act. There's no, how to embody these wisdoms. And one of the things that, that Tom bemoans is the fact that a lot of the young people are not listening to the elders. A lot of them are not doing the ceremonies and that when you don't listen to the elders, when you forget the, especially this, this ceremony to honor the ancestors, you, when you forget these things, things go wild and they get out of hand and it's no wonder because these spirits that are here with us are, are trying to figure out what we want. But if you don't feed them, if you don't honor them, if you don't honor the next set of spirits that are going on, the, the grandmas and the grandpas, if you don't honor them, mm. then they're quiet. Right. That's that. And oh I love gosh. that. No, that's beautiful. And it reminds me of something that... Um, Robin Kimmer said, she said that, you know, right now as human beings, there is sort of a crisis of loneliness and Mm -hmm. people suffer Mm -hmm. from that. And it is a source of so much of our mental health issues, this core loneliness. Right. And she said, the nature, earth, is also lonely right now Mm. and has gotten very quiet. 
And part of the work is to be able to start to create relationship with the nature that is around right. you, with the naming of your favorite tree and the listening to their message and the waking up to that because it that return, I feel like, is key to like where we're headed as just at where humanity is. I feel like we're yeah. headed for a very strong crossroads, a fork in the road, and either we are going to take the past indigenous teachings with us to move forward, or we're going to move forward in a way that um, is is not going to hold the strength of this force of the earth. And that's the other piece of the braid, is the sweet grass alone breaks easily. Mm -hmm. When it is braided, there is such strength in that. So the braided right. soul, the braided um, sense of relationship is so much more powerful and strong to be able to just keep moving forward. And, and I think that's what we see when we're looking at this loneliness. Mm. It's because we've lost two parts of ourselves. A lot of a lot of people are looking. Their validation is outside themselves. Mm. Somebody else approve of me. Let me join this group, or or somebody. You know, I need to get more money, or I need more things. I'm not successful unless I have this size house. So when we focus on only the material aspect of living of life, and we leave out that spiritual aspect mm -hmm. of life. Of course, we're lonely because it's just what you said. We are out of relationship and not. And when we don't believe that nature, like the Thanksgiving address teaches us, needs to hear us appreciate. It's our oldest ancestor. Mm -hmm. You know, nature needs to hear that, that we appreciate. That's why the words are so powerful, you know, and and as as um. Jose Luis Stevens says, and also in A Course in Miracles says the same things. It's not just the words. It's that you, you are saying these prayers, you are making these statements from the heart because yes. that's where your spirit resides. Mm -hmm. you're, so when we can make that connection within ourselves, then we, it's, we are going to feel better. Just like Robin Kimmer says, we're, when we can make that connection with the tree, tree hugging is a real thing. We oh know my gosh, it better. is, it is. You know, I have a tree in front of my house that I adore. She's yes. my big oak. And I've been sitting with her now for the two, three years that I've lived in this house. And I even asked her name and I have a name for her, Mama Cinda. She's like, <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I have spoken to her about in the past is my love of the Portland trees that I had visited where they're covered in the green moss. And it's like a velvet royal robe that those trees wear out in the Oregon coast. Well, Maddie, I go outside the other day, the snow melted and I go visit her and around her base is growing green moss. Oh, her trunk, right? It's oh, <laughs> oh, like, so it, it, like, sometimes I think like it's pretend, right? Like I'm talking to the tree. Is this real? Does right. she really hear me? Okay, I think I believe this. Even though my heart loves her, my mind tells me, nah, maybe yes, maybe no. And I couldn't have gotten a more concrete answer that she's listening. Right. So I made a declaration. Like there can be no gossip under Mama Cinder. No <laughs> negative talk. Nothing. She hears <laughs> everything. <laughs> Only goodness under her. But that, that was to me, um, whimsical wisdom. Right. It is. Right. That is the that was my answer this week to the right. whimsical wisdom of that it the the symbol will arrive if the heart is in the right place. And 
one of the struggles that uh, Robin Kimmer has is she's a scientist, right? She went to school for what she could go to school for, which was to be a forest biologist. She's a professor, but she's also a poet. She's also Native American. She also speaks this language of nature. And it is, she is really pushing towards this um, modeling that wisdom does not tell the whole, the, the intellect can never tell the whole truth of wisdom. Right. And that we must, even though we study and we're there with it and we take in the information, we must open to these other ways of wisdom that live more in the senses, in the emotions, in the arts, in the will, just things we tend to do, but that the whole truth is never told with just one strand. So again, this idea of the weave, of the braid, pulling in more than one way of knowing. And I thought that was great, especially with us doing Wisdom Window, like thinking about how do we pull in um, something right out, something other than just uh, great teachings that are already established exactly exactly and i think i think that that is that is the challenge because we're for in our culture we're so used to looking at just knowledge yes just facts we honor it. wisdom wisdom you know we'll we'll read a play or we'll re see a movie and we're oh there's great wisdom in that but then are is that like the end it's the end of the story it's the end of the book it's the end of the play you know the end of the movie and then we go back to being on to, to not taking that wisdom any further i believe like um, my husband Bob believes, and he'll be on in a few weeks, but I believe that part of our big problem is that we don't do storytelling in our culture. I, human to human, face to face, let your imagination run wild and create everybody in the story as opposed to turning on the TV or going to the movies and, see, and seeing every image splashed up there for you. I love from that. somebody else's imagination. It's not your imagination. And sometimes, I mean, their imaginations are great. You know, I love the Marvel movies, you know, and all of that, but that's not the all of it. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think that we do, uh, we don't have the, the container, the, the space to create story that way. And I do believe that humans have that need because all of us are storytellers, right? I just told you the story of Mama Cinda. I try, I, like, but that, if I were to create that into a storytelling piece, it would be way more inclusive of a lot of different elements. Right, exactly. That it would kind of exactly. travel to Yep, exactly. And I think that, you know, when you look at everything as having a spirit and you create a story around that, that's like, okay, so now I have to admit my new vice. All right, uh -oh. before we go, <laughs> the repair <laughs> shop, the repair shop on Netflix. Is it really? Netflix? Yeah, it is Netflix. Yes, it's a British show where these people bring back to life all these old pieces that have been in, they're, they're like family heirlooms, okay? So they bring it to the repair shop. They have all these artists and experts who are mind-blowing. I mean, mind-blowing in their, their talent and craftspersonship. Uh, it's just incredible. But anyway, so, you know, people bring it in and then they tell the story of the piece. That's they tell... And, and you're, um, I cry like every single time, every time when they return the thing to the purse, I cry when they tell the story. I cry when it gets returned. If they're crying, you're crying. I'm, I'm not kidding. It is very moving. And then I was thinking, you know, both my parents passed away and when we were selling the house, which is actually sold and we have left my mom's China and what I, one thing I didn't realize we had left. So I decided, you know what? I'm taking my mom's china. I, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Not sure where I'm going to put it, but I just don't. I, 
I want that piece of my ancestry. Yeah. You know, I want the, I want to be able to serve food on my mother's China, you know, some, some days when I have people here and it's beautiful. It's very simple. It's like her, you know, it's this beautiful white platinum line China. You can serve it on anything. You could put it on any kind of decoration. It goes with everybody. <laughs> you know, like my mom did. My, my mom who yeah. loved and was kind to everybody. Mm. And then I now talk about spirit talking to you. Mm -hmm. So I have a dream. I used to during thunderstorms, I used to sit on our back patio with my dad and watch the thunderstorms. And so I have this dream that I'm sitting in the, our bent wood rocking chair on the back patio, which we didn't sit in that actually, because it's not an outdoor chair, but I love rocking chairs, sitting in the bent wood chair, rocking back and forth, with, looking at the thunderstorm with the spirit of my father next to me. It wasn't really my dad. Mm. So yesterday, which is the day after the dream, my sister Linda posts, does anybody want the Bentwood rocker? I thought it had gotten sold. Wow. I, I, and when I woke up, I was thinking, shoot, I should have taken that. I should have taken that rocker. I knew I should have taken it. She calls up. No, I took it and I got the, I got the, the cane rewoven on it, but I, I, you know, I've got no place for it. And I said, yes, I'm I have no place for it, but I'm not, I'm taking it. It's well, staying in the family. <laughs> and that is such a moving example, again, of the wisdom coming through because the heart is aligned, right? right. Your heart, it's, I always say, like, God brings you the message, your metaphor, your dream, your image, the book that falls off the shelf, the China that arrives, when the heart is really open to receive it. And that is... That to me is incredible. And this repair shop is very powerful, especially mm -hmm. today talking about indigenous, because if we think of black people, indigenous people of co color in this country that came with the richest of traditions and we mm -hmm. broke it, we broke their broke China. We yeah. broke it, we smashed it to the ground. And if there are pieces that we can now bring back to life, yes, hold together, have them tell their stories and remember so we all can remember and heal that, like something about that repair shop like really wakes up my heart and will to, I don't know, do what, maybe create performances, something around that notion of how do we as a community restore and repair what was so um, broken and destroyed in some cases. Dramatic, dramatic. Okay. Yep. Right. But the stories that they hold, the teachings that they hold, the wisdom of the elders that are still here to tell it is crucial to the yep. moving on. Because even in watching that as, as a witness to it, you were so moved to tears because it is what our heart longs for. Yes. Yes. We and because that. Yes, because we are involved. The whole world should be the repair shop right mm -hmm. now. That's what I think you're yes, saying. That's what that's I'm what, getting to. Yes, yes. That's what I hear you say. Good, you got it right. That's just yeah. what I that, that just very much excited me, that metaphor. Yeah, it is. It's a great metaphor. So that when we are, when we are looking what our action should be based on wisdom, is it repairing? Is it restoring? Yes. Or is it dividing and destroying? Right. You know, what, what, if you're, if that's your action, you're not listening to wisdom. And you know? it takes a, a community because again, if we go back to the show, it is a approaching these broke the brokenness as precious and it is bringing in the artist the technician it's bringing everyone together but in a right. state of of deep um humble ethical careful 
practice in the repair. It's not, I'm right. going to fix it. No, we've got yeah. to bring together the community right. and really let that story be told. So absolutely beautiful. I love, that inspires me, Matt. That really <laughs> well, well, the, and I you were going to admit it like it was a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, and, and that's cultural too. You know, we don't like to admit our sentimentality. We don't want to admit what moves us. Because what's you know? important, it's more important to take the the course or to read the book, but to indulge in a Netflix show. Ah, uh -uh, that's where it showed up. That's yeah. where it showed up because it moved you to tears. There's and it's the storytelling in that yeah. show. It's the stories. It's not like, here's how you fix a stained glass window that got broken. No, it's the you know, story. It's the story with every piece. And seeing wow. the other human, your family there, mm. you know, your, your stranger but family, having the same reaction you would have when, when they repair that that stained glass window or that chair that's been in the family 200 years or that and it's those things that connect us and it's those things we have to remind ourselves mm -hmm. and anything that reminds us even a netflix show that we are all connected <laughs> we, that are. we all have these feelings and mm -hmm. that our responsibility our reciprocity is to help repair each other and the earth I love that. Oh, I do too. Gosh. Beautiful. So, beautiful, beautiful. So that's a good place to end. We want yes. to thank all of you. Maybe you can ask yourselves this, this week before we meet up again next week. What are you repairing? What's in your repair shop this Absolutely. week, right? Yes. Beautiful. And also practice braiding. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's just see what it conjures up, whether it's hair or grass. Practice the braid, yep. lead to it. <laughs> wonderful. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Bobby Lacera, for being our wonderful producer and everybody at Strong Island Entertainment. And we will see you next week with our special guest, Melissa Good Blanket, as we continue on our indigenous journey. Our adopted Cherokee sister will be joining us via Zoom from Oklahoma so yeah. that we can talk Cherokee wisdom next week. So thank you again for joining us and we wish you all a beautiful and a wonderful and wise week. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye, Mayor. Bye, Maddie.